You guys have disappeared. All right. Okay, guys. This is going to be my kind of first thoughts about patch 19.2. Um, you know, what I think is strong, what I think is going to be weak, um, just my general feelings about it. So, uh, yeah, hope, hope you enjoy it. I just want to preface this by saying if you're looking for a ton of arena-related changes... You may not find them here. So, it, it just, it, look, it is what it is, but there are a lot of changes to, uh, to other game modes, okay? So, uh, so uh, bear, bear with me here. Let's, let's take a look. Um, so, yeah, the, the, first, the first big thing is with this new Battleground season, we'll be resetting all players' external rating to zero. Um, there's a blog with a little more info about it. And ratings will be reset once per expansion. Uh, we kind of already knew this from the... Announcement right before this one. So no shock there. You're going to keep your internal MMR to a certain degree unless you were one of the MMR abusers that got to like 25k or whatever. Then I think you you get dropped back down. But um, yeah, so uh, that, that will be a reset, which I'm looking forward to. I always do like the reset. I personally would like a full MMR reset, but I understand why they wouldn't do it because, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't be great for casuals and, and, and stuff like that. Um, all right, so this is the, the big change to Battlegrounds. Dark Moon Prizes. We're introducing a new limited time mechanic, Dark Moon Prizes. Every four turns, you'll discover a Dark Moon Prize and add it to your hand. Every four turns. Um, and as the game progresses, you'll be offered increasingly powerful Dark Moon Prizes to play with, from immediately impactful buffs to game-lasting effects. Yeah, 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 new Twitch to, to Battlegrounds for the next two months. Okay, so two, month, two months of, uh, of this change in. All right, so I don't know if I want to go through all of the different prizes. Um, there, there are a lot of them. Uh, what, I, what I will say is that I think they, at least the, the early ones are fairly well balanced. Um, like, and if I understand correctly, you get a pick from three, right? Right, guys? I'll actually, I'll actually uh, check with chat. You get a pick from three. It's like a discover, correct? I believe that that's how it works. I, I, I remember seeing, you don't know? Chat, you guys are supposed to know this thing. You don't know? Oh, no. You're, you're ruining my, my patch review. Oh, my God. Why would we know? I feel like you guys know everything. It's a discover. Yeah, see, I told you guys. Chat always knows. Um, so, yeah, I guess we can just, just mention them real quick. So, give a minion plus two, two. Add two gold, gold coins to your hand. Uh, give your minions plus one one. That one seems really good to me. Uh, the only advantage of big bananas over plus one one to your whole board is that you can put it on a minion that you want to keep, right? Otherwise, at that stage of the game, the plus one one just seems way better. Um, discover a minion from Tavern Tier 1, which I think will be used to try to find triples, right? Or at least find a pair. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the meta develops around that. Like, if you want to take the tempo, if you want to go for a triple, uh, we'll just kind of have to see. Give minions in Bob's ta Bob's shop plus one health for the rest of the game. Plus one health for the rest of the game. So that's like a, one that's good as you go on. But I don't know. I feel like I'd rather have an immediate impact than that, that one most of the time. Your next three refreshes cost zero, which could ensure you get good shop at uh, Tavern Tier 3. Um, and add a minion to Bob's Tavern for the rest of the game. Add a minion to Bob's Tavern for the rest of the game. So I guess that means you can use it to get guaranteed triples. Like you'll always get that every turn. That's how I'm understanding it. You can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong after that. Is that right? Um, okay, prize turn two. On the house, discover a minion from your current tavern tier. Mm. I mean, it's decent. Gruel rules. I really like this one. This one stood out to me. Give a minion at the end of your turn, gain plus two, plus two. So it's like, uh, it's like an Iron Sensei that you can just have on a good scaling minion forever. So that one seems pretty pretty insane, insanely good. Involving Tavern, replace all minions in Bob's Tavern with ones of a higher Tavern tier. Mm. That, that one feels a little yellow to me. Uh, great deal. For the rest of the game, reduce the cost of upgrading Bob's Tavern by two at the end of your turn. Reduce it by two at the end of your turn. So this is at, at the, the prize turn two. That still could be pretty good for, for leveling cheaply for the next couple of turns. That one seems decent. 
Time Thief. Discover a minion from your la from your last opponent's warband. Okay, so like a mini Tess. Your battle cries trigger twice this turn. Hmm, brand for one turn. Interesting. Uh, the unlimited coin. Gain one gold this turn only. Return this to your hand at the end of your turn. So that gives you one gold every turn. Forever. Uh, give a minion plus five, five, and taunt. So that's a that's a tempo uh, card, the bouncer. So yeah, you know, I, I like, so far just looking at, this, at the spells, I like the, the trade-off between do I want immediate tempo now or do I want something that's going to give me scaling power going forward? Um, so it should make for a lot of decisions within the game. Uh, prize turn three. Okay. Freaking ice block. Why? I hate ice block. Why, why is ice block showing up? Oh, it's okay. It's fine. This is fine. Uh, by the Holy Light, give a minion divine shield. Okay. Pretty, pretty damn powerful. Uh, double a minion's attack. Eh, I guess you could put it like on a cleave. Oh, if you put it on a cleave, it could be kind of good. Uh, fill your hand with bananas. You have to pay the mana for them. Eh, that is that one doesn't seem very good to me. Discover a new hero power. I'm trying to think of the hero powers would be really good with that. Like generally, I, I mean, discovering like Elise's hero power or something could be kind of cool, but that feels a little weak to me as well. Of course, I could be totally wrong about all this, right? Um, repeat customer, return a friendly non-golden minion to your hand to give it plus two, plus two. Turn it to your hand, give it plus two, plus two. Okay, so you could do that on like an Amalgadon or Battlemaster or something. Anything that gets the benefits from getting an extra battle cry effect, I think is the idea there. Uh, make a random minion in Bob's Tavern golden. Does that mean you get the discover? Okay, I'm going to consult chat again on this one. Chat, do you get the discover from it? I'm assuming you do, right? Yeah, yes, you do. Okay. I would assume, otherwise it seems terrible, right? Because you buy it, and then you can play it. Because it's in the tavern, so I would assume you can, like, grab it then. Um... So, you know, worst case, even if it's a minion you don't want, it's a pretty cheap discover, which seems nutty. Uh, top shelf, discover a minion from tavern tier six. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Pretty, pretty good. Definitely feels like a difference in power level between, like, bananas. This one, unless it's a perfect situation. Discover new hero power, eh. I mean, I guess some things like rock and issue could be pretty good later on, right? Okay, and now prize turn four. Now here's where it gets like really wacky. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. But I, I guess a lot of games won't make it to turn four. Uh, or sorry, to, to the to prize turn four, because it's pretty late in the game. But um, okay, for the rest of the game, Minions and Bob's Tavern cost one less. Uh, your first five refreshes each turn cost zero. Okay. Make a friendly minion golden and return it to your hand. So again, kind of similar to... Um, to, to the card that gives it plus two, plus two. It's like, again, with Malgadon, Battlemaster, effects like that. Uh, refresh your gold. At that, at that stage of the game, that's 10 extra gold. Um, Argent Braggart's coming to BGs. So if you have a, a big minion, you can play this minion and copy it, uh, is the idea. Uh, discover a Dark Moon prize from each of the previous prize turns. Ah, so you get the th three of them. And then finally, give a dog a bone. Give a friendly minion, Divine Shield, Wind Fury, and plus 10, plus 10. Oh, boy. So you throw that on your on your Hydra or your uh, Faux Reaper and, uh, and, and and clap. But I don't know. I think the prize turn four is okay for them to be really powerful because it's just kind of like accelerating the end of the game. Um, you know, some people probably will like that. Some people won't like that. Obviously, when your opponent has that big cleave and they hit this, it's probably going to feel kind of bad. But eh, I don't know. It's, it's late in the game at that point. All right. Now on to the new hero. So first up is Kuth. Soon. So the, the hero power here is that at the end of turn, you give a friendly minion plus one, plus one. Uh, repeat zero times, upgrades after each use. Wait, so chat, you get a target though, right? You must be able to target it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you must be able to or it'd be terrible. Right, chat? You, you, get, you get to pick where it is? Because otherwise... Otherwise, it would be, like, awful. Because it just could buff anything. I'm assuming it's targeted. You guys should know these things. Come on, chat. Don't um me. I need some confirmation. 
It's random? Really? I mean, the, the thing that I'm not sure about, the reason I'm not sure is because it says at the end of turn, right? So how would they show it if it's going to buff something and then... Um, if it's going to buff something at the end of turn, if you select it, it's kind of weird, right? Why wouldn't it just buff it immediately? So it kind of does feel like it's random. I think in the crypto video, it was, it was random. Hmm. Okay, if it's random, it's way, way worse. I was thinking that Cthulhu was really good, but I was thinking it was targeted. If it's random, I don't really like it that much. Because you, you buff, you know, like a token that you want to sell, and it's like, great, you know, kind of a waste. Uh, okay. Nazoth. Start the game with a 1-1 one -one fish that gains all your death rattles in combat. So kind of similar to Curator. Uh, I believe it's a beast, if I remember correctly. So you can buff it with beast buffs, but you can't buff it with all buffs, like the, the Curator minion. Um, my first thoughts about this hero is it's not going to be bad for getting, like, top four. Because I think if you just do kind of like a mid-range build, you have a Sneeds in there... Uh, you just have a bunch of minions with Death Rattle taunted. It should be okay. Obviously, board space can become kind of an issue with it, but I think it would be hard to like completely whiff. Uh, but at the same time, it's kind of a fairly linear play style. I mean, you can do something with like um, Baron, right? Or sorry, Goldrin. Have Goldrin first, have that die, then like play this second, have double Goldrin or something. But I feel like generally it's going to be like at the end and you have all these Death Rattle minions and then. You get the effect from this. I don't know. Not my not my favorite hero because it feels like it's kind of a, a, a singular play style. But again, could, could be totally wrong on that. Yasharaj, uh, embrace your rage. Start of combat at a minion from your tavern tier to your warband. Keep it. So you have to have an open board space, right, for this to work, if I'm understanding it correctly. We should get confirmation on that. Because I think the way this should work is you get it to your warband. If your warband is full, it just goes directly to your hand. Chad, has anyone, has anyone give confirmation about this? Because it's one of those things where that, that makes it way worse at a certain point, right? Because if, you, if you're you know in the mid-game, it's hard to play down a unit, and you get, obviously, the unit that you get from there probably won't be that great, so. Someone said Korra says nothing can happen, or nothing happens, like another confirm or deny, hmm. I feel like this is going to get changed eventually to give you the, the unit no matter what. Otherwise, I think it's only okay, but we'll see, we'll see. It's, it's definitely good tempo in the early game, because for two mana, you get something from, let's say, Tavern 2, right? And on average, that should be decent. So it might allow you to like roll, find one good unit in the hero power kind of thing if you, if you have a bad shop. Uh, okay, hero pool updates. Everyone pour one out for a friend at Lester Burn. Galacron has been temporarily removed from the Battlegrounds hero pool. Thank God. I was so tired of getting hit by an Imp Mama from that dude like turn five, turn six or an Eliza or whatever. I will not miss Galacron. I am thrilled that it's dead dead. See you later. I won't miss you. <laughs> uh, Sir Finley has been returned. I'm happy with that. I, I do. I, I always like that that hero. So that hero power. Um, great. Alakamazarak is returning. The, the secret the secret one. Um, competitive spirit has been added to the, to the pool. Okay. So that's probably a little bit of a better secret in like the early game. Probably the idea behind it. Uh, so Ice Block will be back. Freaking Ice Block. Okay, and now now a few buffs, nerfs type thing. Uh, Silas is being uh, being buffed. Increased overall chances of getting tickets after turn one. Hard to say how big of a deal this is if we don't know how much of an increase there is. Uh, Zephyrus the Great. Three wishes. Oh, so basically just now it costs three instead of four. I think this is actually a, a really big change. Um because it, it, it makes the, the, the times where you take the triple way less awkward. Because what, what I would find when I play Zephyrus is you do like, um, you know, you, you have a triple or you have a pair going into your eight gold turn. Or, and then it's kind of weird. You have to like sell something off if you want to like level and take it. There, there were just a lot of awkward situations with this 
Or if like it's your seven gold turn, right? And you want to just like take a four drop. It's hard to do because you'd have to, again, you'd have to sell something to get extra gold. So I think Zephyrus is going to be a lot better. My, my prediction is this is a huge buff to Zephyrus. Uh, Patches the Pirate gets a little bit of a buff. The Hero Pyre goes from four to three. I, I don't think this is that much of a change for Patches because the problem with Patches is getting Pirates. Um, and the Pirates aren't all that strong overall. So, I, I, I you know, it obviously helps a little bit, but I doubt this is going to, like rocket patches into into s tier territory for example all right new minions acolyte of cthune a 2-2 reborn taunt one drop so pretty solid uh tempo card right taunt reborn and as you'll see as we go through this they're definitely pushing the taunt taunt archetype as as a as a, a strategy um tormented ritualist two mana two two this says taunt. Whenever this is attacked, you have adjacent minions plus one plus one. Wait. Is wait, is this permanently? Chat. Chat. Is that like plus one plus one that the, those minions get to keep? Or is it for like that turn? Okay, just in battle. Okay. Okay. I was gonna say that thing's insane otherwise. Okay, okay. I mean it's still it's still probably decent. I don't know. Uh, so you get a two three. But it's effectively a 4-5, kind of, in a way. It, it, the stat lines on it are pretty bad, though, on its own. A 2-3. Hmm. Not sure. Not sure about that one. If it was like a 3-3, three, three, I think it'd be really good. 2-3 is a little underwhelming. All right, Warden of Old. Uh, tier 3, 3 attack, 3 health. Death Rattle add a gold coin to your hand. Now, my initial thoughts when I saw this was it's pretty good. Getting getting extra gold is is nice. I mean, it's one of those things where I think I'd keep this unit around as like just a one of thing as I replace other, you know, crappy units. And this one is fairly crappy, but you tend to have units that aren't that great stick around for a little bit longer than you would like. Um, and at least this one generates generates a gold uh, when it dies, so Obviously, something you want to place replace at some point, but my greedy playstyle uh, <laughs> likes this thing. Uh, Arm of the Empire. Whenever a friendly taunt minion is attacked, give it plus three attack. Oh, I just thought this one with Nizoth. You get plus two gold each turn. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Anyhow, Arm of the Empire. Uh, tier three, four attack, five health. Whenever a friendly taunt minion is attacked, give it plus three attack. Plus three attack. Hmm. Mm. I don't know. Buffs with attack never feel really great to me. I mean, it's a four or five, though. So on its own, its stats aren't bad, right? I think it's okay. I would say I would say it's like average. An average, average minion. A uh, big fern, I like the name. Tier 4 Demon, 4 attack, 4 health. After you summon a Demon, gain plus 1, plus 1 permanently. So another scaling Demon option? Wow. So now we're going to have... We're going to have Big Fernal with Yes Man, with, uh, with, with the Pink Man. I feel like Demons are going to be kind of nutty, right? We already had those and Gold Grubber, and this is like another thing that you can add in for scaling. This one scares me a little bit, actually. The stat line at the start isn't great, obviously, a 4-4, but this one definitely scares me a little. Uh, all right, Karaji Harbinger. Harbinger? Harbinger? Whatever it is. Uh, tier 4, 5 attack, 5 health. After a friendly minion with taunt dies, give its neighbors plus 2-2. Two, two. Tier 4, 5, 5... And this is again like the other one where it's just for just for that battle, right? So it's like a 9-9 tier 4 unit. Not bad. Not bad. Obviously, you're going to want to have... A, you know, the idea is you have all these top minion buffs together. Um, so it'll be hard to say until we actually jump in and play with it. But it doesn't seem bad. Champion of Yashiraj. Tier 4, 2 attack, 2 health. Whenever a friendly top minion is attacked, gain plus 1, plus 1 permanently. Okay, so now this is what I'm talking about. I'm all about those greedy permanent buffs. 
I mean, unfortunately, this is a four mana two two, but if you go for the taunt build and have a full board of taunts and then have this as well, and some of your taunts, see, see here's the thing, some of your taunts, if they get big enough, this will buff them multiple times because it's whenever it's attacked. So if you have a really big taunt, you could potentially get plus two, plus two, or even plus three, plus three on it from this. So, you know, obviously it only really makes sense if you have like that, that full taunt build, but even, even like two or three, I think this unit's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, uh, Faceless Tavern Goer. Tier 5, 4 attack, 4 health. Battlecry, choose a minion in Bob's Tavern, transform it into a plain, or transform into a plain copy of it. So this is just, this is just the plan of making triples, right? Uh-oh. Quinn is not happy in the background. That's the baby. He is upset that the patch isn't live today, but he'll be okay once the patch is live tomorrow. <laughs> so chat, correct me if I'm wrong, this is... I guess you, like, when would be the best time to use this? Is it just for, like, trying to find triples? Like, what, what, what do you, when do you use this faceless tavern goer? Choose a minion, transform to a plain copy of it. What do you think? Six star wolf, brand, light fang? Oh, okay, so it's like, yeah, that, it's kind of like a Zephyrus Wish in a way, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay. I see, I see. Interesting. This one will be, this one will be fun to play with then. It's like, because if you have, if you have one, like, do you buy, I feel like you, you'll use it to get triples a decent amount of the time. Like, if you have a high-powered triple chance... But yeah, Brand Light Fang, oh man. It basically gives you a, a way to get extra. If you don't hit Bran or Light Fang, you can, like a second Light Fang, this gives you another one of it. I don't know if I like this. I feel like this might make it a little bit easier to kind of hit the nuts. Like if you hit one really good unit and you hit this and all of a sudden you have two really good insane scaling units. I don't know if we needed this thing. All right, uh, Mithrax the Unraveler. Tier 5, 4 attack, 4 health. At the end of your turn, gain plus 1, plus 2 for each minion type you control. What is that? Chow, what is that? Dude, call Razorgore. He's crying. It's literally Razorgore, except it's way, 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 way better. It doesn't have the tag of, like, a dragon or whatever on it, but... Holy. I feel like both Menagerie and Demon builds are already pretty good are gonna get way better in this patch. Okay. Alright, I guess... I get, and, and the thing is, like, it doesn't get buffed by, a lot of the, by any of those buff cards, so that is a thing to think about. But that, that seems okay, because if you have, let's say, your, your three targets for Menagerie buffs, then oftentimes you just need, like, one other unit that doesn't steal the buffs... And this also will scale with them, so it seems pretty pretty damn good. All right, Elystra the Immortal, tier six, seven attack, seven health, divine shield, reborn. Whenever a friendly top is attacked, this gets attacked instead. Whenever a friendly taunt minion is attacked, this gets attacked instead. Oh, but this is going to be annoying. So, divine shield, reborn. So you get a 7-7 seven, seven Divine Shield and then a 7-1 Divine Shield Reborn. So, so this thing like Omega messes up attack order for your opponent. I, I think this unit's sne like sneaky OP. It, it obviously depends on what you're playing against, but um, I, I, I definitely think, think this unit is going to have a lot of good uses. And how bad are the stats on its own? Eh, they're not great on its own for a tier 6. A 7-7 seven, seven Divine Shield that's, that summons a 7-1. But, you know, for, for like tech, tech card, it seems pretty good. Alright, and finally, minion pull updates. Righteous Protector, gone. The Beast, gone. Thank God. The Beast could have been removed like 6 months ago. No one would have cared. No one would even notice that the Beast is gone. Uh, crowd Favorite has been removed from the Battlegrounds minion pool. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm i okay with that one going. I never was a big... I, I, I never picked that card a ton. Obviously, it had its place in certain builds. It was decent with Millhouse. 
Um, you know, not bad as like an extra unit menagerie, but it wasn't, I feel like that one could, could kind of go. Shifter Zerus has been removed from the Battlegrounds minion pool. I am a little bit sad about this one, even though it will probably increase my win rate in BGs. J just simply because I won't get jabated into it. <laughs> like, you know, I'm the gambler in me. It's like, it's going to be a Caligos. I just feel it. And then it's a Murloc Tidehunter. And you're like, no, but next turn, next turn, it's going to be good. And then you get like an average unit and you're like, no, no, no. Hold out for the big, the big hit, and then you die. So probably good for my win rate, but I'm a little sad to see that one go. I I, I feel like it's because you know, kind of like Galakrond, If people did hit with it, they pushed a lot of damage, and it might kind of might have kind of felt bad for people. But I don't know. I always kind of enjoyed Shifter. Um, now on to just some constructed balance updates. So Demon Hunter is getting the big nerf. Uh, Blade Dance is now three cost instead of two. Seems good. Uh, Shard Shatter Mystic now costs four instead of three. Nether seems good. Dreadlord's Bite uh, gets nerfed. This is probably the most relevant one for... Um, the heck, I got DC from Mars done. Uh, this is probably the most relevant one for Arena because uh, this card was really good in Arena. The, these two were, were more situational. This card was just very good in its own. Um, so yeah, it's, instead of three attack, two durability, Dreadlord's Bite is now 2-2. Two, two. Uh, Dino Tamer Bran is now from 7 to 8 cost. Uh, again, not really much, much effect for Arena. But uh, I guess Highlander Hunter was a little bit too good, is my guess, or they're worried it's going to be too good after the Demon Hunter changes. Voracious Reader goes from 2 to 3. This is, is a big change for, for Arena. This card was quite good in aggressive decks, and going to 3 mana um, definitely hurts a little bit. I, I don't think it's that big of a deal, because it's still kind of something that you play way later in the game to, you know, to refill, and oftentimes you have the extra mana. So probably a big change for Constructed, but not, not so much for Arena. Uh, Pole Kelt now costs 5 mana. Um... I think there was a Demon Hunter deck that was really good in, in ladder using Pole Kelt, and that's why it got nerfed again. Not really my uh, my my expertise, but um, yeah, change change there too. Duels balance update. So kind of as as expected, they nerfed what is really really good right now. Um, so well, I guess these first changes here are all relating to the cost of, of duels a bit. So reduce the number of unique. Madness of the Darkmoon Fair epic cards required for unlocking hero power number two for each class from 10 to 5. Uh, reduce the number of unique Madness of the Darkmoon Fair cards required for unlocking signature treasure number two for each class from 100 to 90. And finally, reduce the number of unique Skull of Man's cards required for unlocking signature treasure three for each class from 20 to 15. So trying to make it a little more accessible, which is probably probably a good thing because um, you did need a lot of cards to, to be able to, to, to play with this stuff, which felt a little bit bad. Um... Let's see. Connections. Remove Battlecry from Shadow Shell Informant. Shadow Shell Informant. Chat, what is that? What is this? Come on, chat. Someone tell me. What? What is... Is that the rogue hero power thing? What is that? Okay, wait. So, so it doesn't do one damage anymore? It's just gonna... It's just gonna suck? What? What? <laughs> well, then... Why would you take... I don't understand. Well, then... Why would you ever take it? It's just, you just get a 1-1 one, one now? With no battle cry? Huh. Okay. I mean, I, I think it's because the after the other changes, Rogue would have been good, but... Huh, okay. Um, so, Secret Studies, old cost 2, new cost 1. Hero Power, draw a secret from your deck. Oh, this is the, one of the Rogue alter, alternate... Or, sorry, one of the Mage alternate um, Hero Powers. Killamox, uh, Killamox got nerfed, thankfully. Basically, um, it's now plus 1-1 one, one for every discard instead of plus 2-2. Two, two. A long overdue nerf. This was kind of like defi the defining um, card, or just defining treasure for the duels tournament, if you guys remember. Um, they also nerfed more Outcast, which was um, another really good Demon Hunter treasure, uh, going from 3 cost to 4 cost. They nerfed Gift of the Legion, which is the other uh, good Demon Hunter treasure. To go from two cost to three cost, so basically they nerfed Warlock and Demon Hunter, rightfully so. Um, we'll see how much it changes things. You know, I haven't played a ton of duels recently to know, but I will. Some to some people's disgust, some people's happiness, I will definitely be jumping into duels again uh, and, and seeing how it feels after these changes and, and see how the meta feels. So uh, we'll check it out. Hopefully, it's a little bit more diverse. Uh, these. Oh wait, there's two more changes. Herding Horn. Old cost 5, new cost 4. I'm trying to remember what this does. After you play a beast, summon a copy of it and lose 1 durability. Uh, I still feel like that's not going to be that good. Could be wrong. 
Uh, Draco Mercanicus. That is so hard to say. So this went from five to four mana. Death Rattle, draw a dragon, murloc, and mech from your deck. They cost two less. This is the, I think, one of the Paladin treasures, right? Yeah, 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 Paladin. Uh, okay, so maybe this will be a little bit better. Maybe Druid Bistro will be a little bit better, and Paladin Menagerie will be a little bit better. Well, we'll see. Uh, okay, wow, this is a lot of text. I'm not going to go into this too much, but these are progression system changes. I think they had a big post about these. Um, chat, do you, see, do you see the word arena? We made it to the notes. We made it to the notes, baby. Removed finish an arena run with four or more wins quests because these quests feel unrewarding or too difficult. Rip arena quest. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to look through you can the notes, you can you can read all the all the changes they made. They just adjusted quests a little bit. I think to make a lot of them a little bit easier to uh, to complete. Um, Adding more rewards to certain levels of the rewards track and expand their track rewards levels above 50. Yeah, so, you know, again, this, there was a whole other post about this. I don't want to go into it in too much depth. But basically, they're improving the reward system, which is very good. Very nice to see. Okay, Winter Veil vale quests are coming. Uh, Winter Veil vale is underway. Get to the Holiday Spirit by completing a legendary quest chain. There are rewards a total of four. Madness of the Dark Moon Fair card packs. These two quests will appear one at a time in your quest log and will not override any of your other quests. Cool. Stuff. I like stuff. Uh, Book of Heroes, another Book of Heroes is live. I haven't done any of the Book of Heroes, so not all that relevant to me, but cool, cool. Oh, and then on January 5th, we get another Book of Heroes. Okay, okay, cool. Um, nothing about the white noise, right? And nothing, I mean, if you guys don't know, there's been white noise in, in Battlegrounds in the background for like, feels like four months or so now. Don't think anything has, has changed with that. Um, I'm hoping... I have no confirmation on this. No no reason to believe this outside of Ixar saying soon TM about arena mic adjustments. But I'm hoping we get arena, arena mic adjustments tomorrow. Sometimes they haven't been putting in the patch notes uh, lately. So I think there is a chance. This isn't like Keck W Arena. There's no way. I think there has been you know a precedent for this. So fingers crossed we get some mic adjustments. So Demon Hunter isn't at 57% win rate that it, it currently currently is that okay all right thanks for watching and um i'll see you guys soon what do you guys think of